Hey there everybody, welcome to this week's Deck Tech! This is where I'm going to show you how I run uh, a beautiful 60 of one of these crazy decks. One of these silly decks is going to be getting played this week. Uh, I made this decision based on the fact that I haven't really had a lot of time in the past week to play around with something that I'm unfamiliar with. So, we're going to crack one of my favorite decks in the format and it's gonna be mind mazels for shazels i'm sorry i know a lot of people were asking for uh one of the new decks i saw a couple of responses for that but uh like i said i mean i want to go with something that i'm more comfortable with something that i know is going to be insane just go off crush people's faces and win us some matches we've even got some fun in the deck in the form of one particular card uh so this deck obviously i got a really 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 sexy curve uh just very very low on our high drops or high cost cards we're going to top out at three which means that i can run 23 lands that's where i want to start let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to be going into battle with those 23 lands and first off is going to be three fantastical bars this is a 2 2 for 1 mana. Uh, it has a huge drawback, obviously, when it becomes a target of spell or ability, sacrifice it, and that sucks big old balls. But at the very least, you're going to draw some burn off your face. You're going to do something awesome with this card coming into play. That's just how it's going to work. It's one mana, and you're sucking out something. You're taking damage off your face. Uh, you are eating a removal spell out of their hand. So it's actually pretty sweet. It's a great card. I even enjoy it when, you know, something bad happens to them. We're also going to say that if they have a bonus effect that would come about from killing a creature, such as... Oh, I don't know, like if they were doing a Tendrils of Corruption against this thing, they're not going to gain that life because this dude dies before that card goes off because it happens immediately when it is targeted, which is great. Uh, never make the mistake, though, to play this card on our Burr, and that will be four unsummons. This card, of course, is going to target it, so it would just sack itself anyway. Once this thing has been targeted, once any cards with this ability have been targeted, they are done. Forget about them. They have left you and will never, ever come back. Unsummon, though, is a very good card, which we can get back if we really, really need to. Unsummon is pretty damn sweet because it's of course going to bounce a creature back into our opponent's hand. We can do fun stuff at end step. We can mess up double blocks. We can do all sorts of things. This is a real utility card. I can't really sing its praises enough. There's a reason it's been around for so long. Next, we have a four pack of Phantasmal Image. Uh, this card's fantastic. You may have Phantasmal Image enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature. It enters as a copy, it does not target. That's important to point out in case anybody is confused about the rules on that. Uh, it's Except it's an illusion in addition, it also has when this creature becomes target of spell or ability sacrifice. We already talked about those weaknesses, but Phantasmal Image is amazing because it is two mana and it is gonna copy pretty much anything on the board, definitely anything on the board. Uh, and it's going to be really awesome at that kind of eating removal and doing fun stuff like that. It also combos off very nicely with the four pack of Lord of the Unreal that we run. This creature, of course, is going to drive this deck for most of our matches. But this combo is what's really going to go off because it's, of course, going to give it self hex proof, meaning that it's very difficult for our opponent to kill it. There are a lot of sack effects and things in the format now, except people aren't really playing demons too much. Uh, but Phantasmal Image, of course, if it copies Lord of the Unreal, has a bunch of extra bonuses. But Lord of the Unreal on its own is still amazing because for, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is good just at the outset. But we never really want to play him without some form of protection because all our, our illusion creatures are going to get plus 1, plus 1 and have Hexproof on top of that, which is just fantastic. Uh, he really kind of gets behind this deck and gets going. Four, four of him, I think we said that. But we're also going to run a one of of Snapcaster Mage. This card was in standard. It was huge in standard. It was crushing in standard, which means that it is going to be excellent. That almost always transfers and translates into the card being amazing in this format as well. This dude's going to flash in, which means that he can eat some damage, do something for you. He's just going to bounce onto the field and say, hey, what's happening? But he's also going to give a card, an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard 
flashback until end of turn. Now, of course, the flashback cost is going to be equal to the mana cost of the card. So if it was something like Unsummon, it's going to be one, just as an example. But this is going to allow us to, for five mana, cast a cancel, or for, you know, four mana, cast, um, oh god, what is, where is it? Counter spell. <laughs> oh my, uh, but, but this, this is a good card. It's a good solid card. It's going to allow us to do a lot of fun, silly things to our opponents. Um, you know, a well-placed, a well-timed unsummon is going to be very powerful. Plus, this guy can get down, block, maybe even kill something. So, fantastic card. I love him a lot. He's got flash. It's a fun thing to do. We have got Aether Figment. This dude has a little bit of a kicker cost. We're running two of them. Uh, but this guy's got a little bit of a kicker in the form of three, which means that for five mana, he's going to come down as a three-three unblockable. Sometimes that's pretty relevant. Uh, unblockable is really amazing. I really appreciate having that ability. Not to mention the fact that if we have a lord out, he's going to get buffed. Uh, this guy's won me many a game, so I very much enjoy playing him. Sometimes he's just a one-one for two, but he can't be blocked, so I run him. I cannot stress enough just how good just how insane um, the ability for this card to not be blocked is. Like, nine times out of ten, that is going to be a home run hitter for you. Uh, we've got Krovakin Mist. This is a card that's been around for a while in these games. It's another illusion. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of illusions on the battlefield. We run a good, healthy amount of illusions. We don't run all of them, but this guy is, is pretty excellent to have out there. I like him a lot because he can get pretty big and be protected depending on what other creatures we have. So one of, of him, uh, two of the figments, and of course, a one run of the twin cast. This is going to copy target instant or sorcery. We've talked about this card before. Make sure that you realize that this is a copy, not a redirect, meaning that the original one will go off unless you are copying a cancel to cancel a cancel. Wow. Um, but basically, twin cast is pretty awesome because you can dupe a lava axe and toss it back at your opponent. And for two mana, you're going to do all sorts of crazy, silly, awesome, amazing things depending on what your opponent is casting. Twin cast can win you the game. Now, I do like redirect a little bit better because it's going to get the heat off you and kind of save your bacon in a lot of instances. But I enjoy twin cast as well. It's, it's just a much different effect. They're not even really comparable cards when you think about it. Same cost, obviously. Um, but it is, they're both very different things and they're used for very different things. Uh, this could also be used to double down on abilities or benefits that you're casting on yourself because it's cards you control or your opponent. Twin cast is amazing. We'll see, we'll see how good it is hopefully this week. Uh, we've run, we are going to run two counter spells as well. That is two mana counter target spell. I can't really sing the praises of this card enough. Put it in your deck if you don't already. Uh, Phantom Warrior is also very fantastic. We're going to run two of those. He's a three drop. Generally, your unblockables are going to be one mana more than their attack, power, and defense. Well, that's pretty much just a rule of thumb with, with unblockable creatures, flying creatures. That's kind of where you're going to get when you have evasion, uh, what you're going to get to. This guy is pretty good. I like the unblockable, obviously. He comes into play quite a bit. He can block and chump block and stuff and kind of save you a little bit of time if he needs to as well. He doesn't have anything weird like can't block or be blocked uh, like Tormented Soul, which makes him pretty good. I like him a lot. Uh, next, we're going to move on to three Claustrophobias. Now, this card is excellent, in my opinion, uh, because it is going to be one of this deck's only way to deal with threats, deal with creatures, once they've hit the battlefield. Now we have a lot of cancels, we have a lot of counter spells, things like that, effects like that, and we have some bounce and stuff that can buy us a turn, but Claustrophobia is going to be able to shut our opponent's creature down. Now sadly, I would definitely run three Pongify in place of the Claustrophobia if they would let me, but this is the best we have. This is the best removal we have, uh, and of course I say that because it's not going to stop things like uh, different demons and stuff like that. Um, from going off and from causing trouble. Any card that has an effect that can still be used that is an attack effect is still going to be able to go off. So Claustrophobia is not the best removal. It's kind of weak against creatures like that. But if it's just a big fat dude like an Eldrazi or something that you're sitting across the table from, Claustrophobia is going to shut that down really well for you. 
Uh, Dream Fracture is an excellent card. Now, I usually don't like to give my opponent an advantage, which obviously the draw a card is big. An entire card for them is kind of insane. But I get to draw a card too. And generally, it's going to be something that answers or at least takes care of the card that they have. I really like Dream Fracture because it replaces itself, it cantrips, and it cancels a spell. I just enjoy it. I mean, obviously, if it didn't let my opponent draw a card be broken, um, it'd be really, really good. But uh, it, that is a foreseeable loss of fidelity in the card's strength. Like, I, I'm okay with that because nine times out of ten, Dream Fracture is going to get me where I need to be. Uh, generally, I only use it if it's about to win, if I'm about to win the game and they have something unexpected for me because then the card that they draw, if they, you know, tap down for a corrupt or something, then the card they draw is not going to be able to get them there. Dream Fracture is good. Depends on how you use it. Be careful with it because that card is a huge deal. Don't think that giving your opponent a card is just something to brush off lightly. One of those in the deck, we've got Got two cancels counter target spell for three mana this is the classic it's a really good run it frost breath is going to be able to buy us a little bit of time this card costs three but it's going to tap up to two creatures and they don't untap during the controller's next untap phase i run both of these because it is a very good way to kind of buy us a little bit of time maybe we can get some card draw or something going in the interim um, and just kind of get where we need to be and beat our opponents that way Buying time is one of Blue's greatest strengths, and Frost Breath is a great way to do that. We've got Divination. Speaking of card draw, we're going to run two of those because I love drawing two cards. Two cards for three mana is a pretty sweet deal. It's going to allow us to dig through our deck, find our cancels, find our unsummons, find our counter spells. Uh, and it's going to just help us kind of sew up the competition. I love drawing cards. I love this card because it lets me do just that. We're gonna run one Kip Cryptic Command because it does everything. Look at what this card does. For four mana, we can counter target spell, return target per permanent to its owner's hand, tap all creatures your opponent controls, or draw a card. And we get to pick two of those. I still do not understand. Like, it, it, this card is unfathomably good. I love this thing. I'm glad to have it in the deck. You guys should definitely be running it. This is, this is almost an auto add in my uh, opinion. We've got Force of Will as well, another excellent card. We can pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than play Force of Will's mana cost and his counter target spell. Not to mention the fact that if we get up to five mana, we get to just counter target spell anyway. We don't even care. So that's pretty fantastic as well. One of Cryptic Command, one of Force of Will, and one of Temporal Mastery. Now, this card I wasn't running. I mean, I've played around with this spot. I've had Draining Mulk in there. I've had Sphinx of Magosi in there. I've had some fun things in there, but to be honest with you, when it gets right down to it, Temporal Mastery is just going to have us have a lot more fun. Uh, it's going to allow us to do some crazy things, run some tricks. I think it's going to be a lot more entertaining just to have this in the deck because the Miracle Cost, of course, is very exciting to have in there as a possibility. Not to mention the fact that if we have some really close games, then we always have the Temporal Mastery to think about. And I just think it's gonna be kind of a titillating thing to have in the deck while we are running through this, this week. I, I really think that's just gonna be more entertaining than some of the other stuff that I could do. Now let's go ahead and look at these by cost, why not? And talk about the cards that I'm not bringing. Starting off with Jace's Phantasm. Now, this is a card in particular that I'm not super fond of in this deck because I'm not milling my opponent, so it's a 1-1. I know it's an illusion, but it's just not good enough. I'm not going to play crappy illusions. Uh, next, we're going to go on to Veiled Sentry. I do not like this card. Uh, some people say it's like a 2-2 for 1. Sure, sometimes. Um, I, I don't know. It's just not... It doesn't do it for me, personally. I mean, I've seen the card... I've seen the card go off. It's a guy, I guess. It's never something that I'm worried about, though. That's the thing. Like, when I'm playing against my opponent and he plays this card, I'm like, that's fine. And I don't want my opponent to think that about this build. I want my opponent to be constantly threatened by unblockables and by buff creatures and by, you know, my images, my dupes. Not to mention the fact that I would not cut one of my current creatures for this card because late game, if they have powerful board position, they don't have to worry about it. Early game, it's only going to be like a 2-2 or something for one. And I've already got 2-2s for one. Uh, and I don't even have to do anything special or like meet any special conditions. So, and this thing is just going to become it on... It's, it's whenever they cast the spell. 
So, I don't know. I mean, it could come back to you and it's able to attack. I don't, there's too many caveats for that thing. I'm just not confident enough in its ability to consistently bring me a win. This deck might be the most consistent deck in the format. I mean, I, Zombies is really good too, but this deck consistently digs out of scenarios. And I honestly can't imagine getting rid of any of the cards in here just for this Veiled Sentry. So, that is my defense of having Veiled Sentry out. Do with it as you will. Uh, this guy does some stuff, I guess. What's he do? If I cast like seven, I don't know, he's crap. Um, Gosper Phantasm, this has the sacrifice thing. Now, I only run, uh, seven? Yeah, seven cards that say that. And that's because they do crazy abilities. They have amazing abilities or things like that. Phantasmal Bear is really good too, uh, obviously. So, this thing is just the two one for two. It's not good enough to have that kind of weakness. So, I definitely need to have that left out. Uh, Ovenize is about making a dude a sheep. It's just not, I mean, they lose abilities, which is always fun, and they become an O1, but generally my dudes are not ready to kind of deal with the O1 either, so it probably lives that turn. It just makes me really sad. I don't know about this card. I ran it for a while. It just does not go off, so I did test it out. I've tested pretty much every card in this deck. Uh, and it's just not good enough to make the build. I've seen people try and use it against me, and I'm never scared of it. Um, it'd be different if it was, oh, the snake one, because you get to draw a card off that one. So that's a little bit different. That's a little bit better, in my opinion. Ovenize is just not going to be good enough. Uh, maybe in sealed, but, you know, not. We've got too many good options, like I'm saying. Uh, Illusory Angel is pretty good. You've got to cast another spell this turn though. It costs three, so it's really slow actually. Uh, the best we can hope for is a turn four unveiling of Illusory Angel, and that's just not good enough for me. It is a four, four for three with evasion, which is really good. It bucks a lot of trends and things like that. But I mean, we're talking about what? We're talking about getting down into turn five, turn six maybe before we can play this. So it's just not very good. If it had alternate casting costs, like if it cost I don't know, like four or something or five or something to play it, but you could play it for three. If you'd played another spell that turn, maybe we'd consider it, but it's not like that. We can only play it if we cast another spell. Not to mention the fact that a lot of our stuff is going to be happening at their end step. So this guy is just not good enough for me. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I have going on is end step fodder. So Illustrator Angel is just out. Blind Phantasm is boring 2-3, so that is staying out. It's an illusion, but like I said, I'm not super hyped up on the illusion thing in this deck. It's going to be a lot of cancels and then a lot of just good beats towards the end. So we're going to leave Blind Phant Phantasm out. Illusionary Servant. This guy is got that same ability. He's a 3-4 three, for 3. Yeah, that's pretty good. He's got evasion. Yeah, that's great. Um, he's a little bit better than some of the other ones, but I don't see him live very long when I'm playing against it. And to be honest with you, I didn't see him very long when I was unlocking the deck. Uh, he just it doesn't stick around. He always dies. Sure, he's going to eat some removal for your stuff, but I've got better things to do on turn 3. Mainly just passing turn and having stuff like counter spell open, having my cancels open, having my tap downs open. I'd rather just be, this deck is a little bit more controlly, and that's a little bit too aggressive for me to be honest with you. Uh, this thing gains life, we do not run these stabs, they're out. We've got Halcyon Glaze, I don't like this card. Yes, I realized that I lost a game to this card in my entire magic career, I've lost a game to this card does not make it good it stays home i mean i understand it depends way too much on what else i have in my hand it could just be garbage it could be good it's not consistent enough and like i said this is a more controlly pile so i want consistency i want it to just come down every single game and run almost the exact same way and this build does this thing's too much of a wild card for me i do not want to see it in my hand wistful thinking is a sorcery you draw two cards, then discard four, no, gone. I mean, I guess what are we, what is this? I guess it's aimed at our opponent, obviously, but it's like Mills too, and if they have to, I, it's, it's no, it's not good, it's not in here. Oh, uh, this is an illusion, um, it's like Chronozoa, I guess? Vanishing three, vanishing is an old mechanic. It's got counters on it, the counters come off. When the counters are all gone, it dies, but then it like splits and crap and, well, not vanishing just means that when the counters come off, it just goes away. It's a fun mechanic. It was a weird time in Magic. Definitely they were testing out a lot of kind of wacky things. Uh, but yeah, it's a three, three. It splits into a couple more guys if it lives, but it's a four drop. So in this format, you just don't have enough gas at that point to protect it. Plus, why do I want to protect it? 
It's just a 3-3. Three, three. Nah, it's got flying, which is kind of good. Phantasmal Dragon dies. It always dies. It is going to die every damn time you play it. So that's out. Uh, Etherplasm. Uh, whenever this dude blocks a creature, you may return it to its hand. So it's like ninjutsu for free. Uh, it costs way too much. That's a problem with that. Uh, now we've got Phantom Beasts. It's the same thing we've been talking about. Sacrifice. I don't like the negative 7, negative 0 for the same reasons I don't like Ovanize. That's out. Mirmad Phantasm. This thing's got flying. It's 5 1 for 5 mana. Mirmad Phantasm moves and shuffles it into his or her library. If that player does, he or she reveals cards from the top of that library until a card named Mirmad Phantasm is revealed. The player puts the card onto the battlefield and all their cards are filled this way into his or her graveyard. I don't know why this is in this deck. I don't. I, I, I don't. Why? I don't understand it. This is in here. But it, it, no, not this deck. Leyline Phantom, not good. Bounces back, does sad things. Combat damage to anything, not to your opponent, you guys. Combat damage to anything. 1-1 one, one blocks it back in your hand. It's a 5-drop. You want to spend the entire end of the game just dropping the same 5-drop over and over? No. No, I don't. A Mind Control was in here for a while because it's removal and you grab a dude. I actually really, really like it. It was in here instead of doodly blue, uh, drawing a card for two. Because sometimes if you draw this early on, you're just drawing a card for two mana. I don't know, it makes me sad. Mind control is gonna take a dude off the field. You got Grave Titan, I got Grave Titan. And they don't have it. That's the thing that makes it so much better than the early side of the pool with uh, Phantasmal Image. Like, mind control is better because they do not get to keep theirs. Because remember, they're going to get to attack first because their creature had to come down first so that image had something to copy. No, not not good times. It's sad times. Well, most of the time, image is going to go for Lord of the Unreal, but whatever. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, time reversal costs five, but it does all sorts of crazy bullshit. I don't want to deal with that. No, not, not happening. Draining Welk, I love. You know that. I love this card. I have an unhealthy relationship and attachment to this card. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Late game, it's really good. Early game, it's cost too much, obviously. <laughs> but I, I took it out. It's fun. You can play it because you've got you've you've almost got an open slot. And to my mind, the one card that you could argue against is Temporal Mastery because sometimes it wins you the game, but sometimes, and like I've been saying, consistency is my goal here. Uh, sometimes it's just draw a card for two mana. But I think it's going to be fun. Um, you could also run this guy. He's six mana. He's big and fat. But on your next turn, when you untap. You get to draw two cards, and he becomes an 8-8. Eight, eight. I actually really like him. I almost, huh. I don't know. What would be more fun? Because you can use that instant speed, be all slick, and be like, draw cards, draw cards. I, ugh, ugh, ugh. I almost like him more. He's a 6-6, six, because six, we got a lot of creatures in here. You know what I mean? Like, we got a lot of dudes that are going to be getting removed from the game, getting killed. So maybe they won't have the removal, but I do only run the 23 lands. Like I was saying, I want to keep it pretty slim, but he costs less mana than Temporal Mastery. I don't know. He's out. He's good. You can make the argument. Like, these are cards that you could make the argument. Well, not this thing. You can make the argument to put them in, obviously. This thing does not go off, and if it does go off, it's going to immediately die. I promise you. They saved removal for this thing. I do. They should. If they don't, then you're going to win anyway because they're bad and you're playing a great deck. Like, that's how this goes. If, you're, if your opponent's good enough for this card to not be in, like, if your opponent is good enough for you to not already have won, then this card is not going to win you the game, so it stays out. That's as simple as it is. Like, some people complain when you say they're going to kill it. That is why I don't run this card. Like, some people say, well, you can't use that as an excuse not to run a card. They're going to kill it. That's a stupid thing. It's not. Because if your opponent is good enough, they will always kill it. It's not a sometimes they kill it. It's not a maybe they kill it. And that's why all the cards that I like have things like this have enter the battlefield effects. Because at least I get something for my trouble instead of just having this thing come down and immediately die. Plus, you have to have the land. That's seven land. That's more than I want to see in this deck. Uh, I do not like this guy. And, I mean, I will constantly fight uh, for and advocate for the argument that, you know, this card always dies. That's why it's not in my build. I understand that. Like, I completely get it. If your opponent's... I mean, we've, we've I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. Uh, this thing just doesn't have a good enough enter the battlefield effect to warrant its excruciatingly high mana cost. There are several decks in the format, popular decks I might add. They're just not gonna go, like what are you gonna get corrupt here? I guess they don't get to play it, but sad face, I don't know, then sit down. Uh, in this thing, I mean, obviously it's a fun card. We have no way to get it out sooner in this deck, right? 
didn't slip something by me, did they? No, none of these card interactions are going to bring that thing out sooner. Yeah, there's nothing we can do to bring that card out sooner. I mean, obviously, it's fun. I mean, I saw it in Standard for a while, and it was silly. I like when people play silly things. Uh, but it costs way too much, so that is our 60 for this beautiful blue deck. We're going to have so much fun this week, you guys. I absolutely promise you that. We're going to be crushing fools left, right, and center. I love this blue deck. I'm really excited to get back into it and play a lot more of it. Be watching this channel because we got a lot of cool things going on. We've got my Let's Play of La Mulana going on every other day. It just kind of happened that way, but it's going to be every other day. It's going to be going up tonight on Monday. So check that out, please. I'm begging you. Check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, uh, alternating every other day, we're doing extra magic videos as well. I've got some really cool... Hold on to your britches. Playtest videos of how we're going to be able to do some of this integration stuff. How we're going to be able to do some of the stuff where you and I play together. So we're doing some Skype chatting. We're doing some Google+. Plus. Uh, we're getting stuff done. So we're working towards that. And that's coming in the form of, I will tease this, you guys are going to see some amazing two-headed giant play. It's not every video I got for you, but it's some good shit. So definitely stay tuned for that as well. But anyway, you guys, I want to thank you for watching this episode. Thanks for coming out for the 60s. I really, really appreciate every view that you guys send my way. And I want to say that I will see you tomorrow.